Hello everybody and welcome back to Just Roll It Already. We're doing Let's Look At, and today we are looking at the newest addition to the Star Wars line, period, Edge of Empires, for Star Wars, Ed done by Fantasy mm -hmm. Flight Games. Because Watsi lost the license to do so. Yes. When they made Cade Skywalker, or, yeah, Cade Skywalker, Smoke Death Sticks. Lucas was like, nope. <sighs> All those books. Non-canon. Non-canon. They're gone. Yep. Yep. And they're damn good, too. Well, at <sighs> least we have the fanfic. Except for the OP Jedi. Yeah. That's that's the thing, yeah. That's actually and that's the first thing about this book or this system I love. Uh you do not play Jedi's. Can't. Nope. This is based on the fringe or area. Sith. Uh, or yeah. Sith, yeah. yeah. This is based on the fringe area of the space in the the Jedi uh no, sorry, Star Wars world. And it's kind of nice in a way because you're in the middle of nowhere. The Empire is not bothering you. The Republic, the Rebels are not bothering you. You just are normal people living everyday lives. So technically, I, no, not at all. Normal as Star Wars allows you. A Wookiee, a normal what? person living its life. Well, yes. a normal bounty hunter, a normal smuggler, a yeah, normal, normal mercenary. You live, in, okay, you live in the middle of nowhere. What are you? You're shooting womp rats with with a flyer. Okay, that's a sign of a serial killer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> shooting the ball prints into three. It's, it's the sign of a serial killer. <laughs> there's no girls, there's no jobs. What else there's gonna we do? We have three sons. Like, <laughs> yeah. But okay. uh, uh, Family Guy. But yeah. you, uh, this takes place right after the destruction of the Death Star. Uh, Battle yeah. of Yevon. Yeah, Yevon Battle Four. of Yevon. So it's uh, Rebellion era, yep. um, distinctly. <laughs> yeah, uh, Han Solo's here. You could probably kill him if you want. Uh, probably has stash for him. Yeah. And Boba Fett. I doubt any of the main characters are stat. Well, probably. Because if you stat it, it will kill it. They'll, they'll kill it. Yep. They'll find them. Even though you don't want them to find them, they'll find them. <laughs> it's the Age of the Empire. They're in the core systems. Like, yeah. Anyway, the point is. Uh, so, first, uh, let's talk about what it came with. Um, didn't come with it. It had to be bought separately. Are you kidding me? How no. much was it? Uh, these are twelve bucks. Twelve bucks. How much is the book? Um, retails at. Uh, you're not gonna be happy. Ninety dollars? No, sixty. I'm gonna freaking go to somebody's house right now. I think. With Wait. Baseball bat and the ladder. Where is it? Where is <laughs> That's the ladder. For that. That's you prepare. Like you don't know if they have a two-story oh, house or not. Wait. Yeah. Games redeemed. Hmm? It has an app. What? What the hell is the app with the dice roller app? Yeah, it's a dice roller app. Oh, lovely. It's a $60 book with a dice roller app. Yeah, yeah. Well, now you have to buy a $300 stuff. <laughs> no, but... Uh, uh, yeah, it's... I bought... Th I got this online pretty cheap. I feel like this is just Numenera all over again. Uh, well, no. we haven't reviewed that one yet. We looked at uh, it. I know, but we'll get to that. Yes. I'm going to say, uh, well, if we were going to talk about dice, though, first right. I don't like the casing on the dice. <laughs> I don't like the packaging. I don't like me. the idea of how the dice could be stolen very easily. Like, well, well, you know, honestly, I don't care anymore. I just, for a game developer, I don't like the idea. They're twelve dollar dice, and it's a sixty dollar book, and the dice don't have numbers. <laughs> These numbers. dice can't be used in anything but this game. Uh, I don't care. Yeah, I mean, unless you figure out some weird, like, roll system you want to do for, like, Dungeons and Dragons. like a In weird, order to get the conversion, is, you'd have to buy the book. Yeah. This okay. is one of the most complicated dice systems I've seen uh, in a long time. It frustrates me. I thought this would be cool, but then it was like... This is not a, uh, a new... This is a dice pool system that uses positive and negative dice and based on success. Don't assume that positive and negative means it has numbers. It means that it's positive as in, like, I have a good feeling about this, and negative as in I have a bad feeling about this. has no numbers, there's no calculation, it's just... I've got to go through. Uh, I've got to go through those. No, I've got to go back through the may Rosetta I, Stone that is yeah, there. Wait, may I sit down and say the what this consider what this consists of polyhedrons? There is sixty eights. Now, even if you were to use normal dice, who has sixty eights? You might. I think you do. Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, I think it's very rare, though, for the average gamer to have six d eights. They have an average about one d eight. Yeah, because you have like one. You have one or two dice sets. Maybe three dice sets. John here has like twelve. I have maybe four dice sets. Uh, but yeah, those are complete sets, not just sets of dice. Like yeah. that are, it specifically has no d tens, so you can't oh. just get a. Oh, this is a d twelve, right? These are there's four d twelves, four d sixes, and six d eights. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to mention. Mm. It also has a percentile system in it. Why? 
Why? Okay. Yeah. No, there okay. actually oh, is. So it's, it's like a random event chart, like for yeah, advantage. Yeah, it actually yeah. talks about two okay. D10s. It does. So you're actually yes. putting. So I want to say there is six, 10, 12, 14, 16 dice per player. By the way, this dice pool is meant to be per person, not as a group. I don't know. I at this for twelve dollars, I'd say it have to be for the group. You would need to have two: one for the game master and one for players. At minimum, you need two sets because game master. Do the well. Okay, the it's not like they're rolling the same turn though. Not necessarily. It's but a very narrative system. And generally, it's designed you want to. You might want to hide your rolls as a game master. If you're the kind of game master that you don't want to roll in front of people, right. you might want your own set then. Right. So. Like the greedy slot, the other screen, right? And you just like reach around, grab it, and just roll. But if you're rolling first, I mean, you have to rem you have to memorize all of these symbols that you just. You got your Rosetta Stone right there. Go okay. ahead. Go ahead. And now the we we just yeah. reviewed the dice. I'm putting these away now. Okay, people, the dice are strange. They're confusing. Read the book. Figure it out. Like any other what? game, why? you have to read it. John, put them away. You know, honestly... Let's I, get to the book. All you know, right, everybody. You've been sitting here waiting for this. Let's get started. I'm so grabbing about the damn dice. Gosh, <laughs> shut Art is fantastic. Yes, the art is amazing. Oh, and it came with tokens. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, it came with, like, light and dark side tokens. Which are cool. Art. Full color all the way through. Paper, uh, high gloss. Sort of very a, uh, thick. This book is 444 pages thick. Chris, I think you're anybody, anybody know uh, Fred Frezak? For instance, a comic book producer, he did a lot of comic book paintings. Think on um, Kroll the Barbarian, things like that. Uh, he did like those paintings and stuff. I kind of get a that kind of vibe off the artwork. It's nice uh, comic book comic book paintings. Like yeah, a, it's it's very detailed, very good. It's very colorful. There's it, it feels like Star Wars, but without the silly cartoony feels as some of the earlier games had. This one is done by Fantasy Flight Games, and yes, they are notorious for selling expensive books and strange dice systems. Some people are turned off by this, and it is very strange. The system itself is odd. It's a little bit so different that it turns people off. If and they it use, makes me murderous, dude. It's not just turning me off. It makes me murderous. If they use, yes. if they, no, actually, I think John will agree with me. If they use numbers on the dice... Oh, it'd be easier. It, there'd be no issue. There'd be no issue. There'd be no issue because we know numbers. And there, really no there numbers. is a conversion system in the book for normal number dice to be transferred in or translated as. But probably for a lot of your first sessions, you're gonna have to keep going back to the book to reference it or print it's out. A Rosetta, it's a Rosetta Stone at this point. Yeah, you're gonna have to pr print out a reference. So yeah, it's a reference. It. And it, it's unless it's included in the character sheet. It's not. Uh, I already I already checked the character wow. sheet. Character sheet, by the way. Awesome. I actually like the character sheet. Yeah. It's actually very straightforward and simple. Sounds <laughs> like it's dice system. <laughs> we'll have to give it an actual try one of these times to see how well it works. Because yeah. Just because we look at the dice system right now, people, doesn't mean that we're going to hate the game. It's Star Wars. I don't need to say anything about the system, I mean the setting, because everyone knows Star Wars. It's awesome. Yeah. You have lightsabers, you have bounty hunters, you have spaceship gun battles, and you destroy stuff and kill evil people. You can still build a lightsaber, you just don't have force powers. Oh yeah, you can't be a Jedi, but you can buy it. That's just one redeeming quality, is there are no Jedi or force Which, builders. Now, there's probably people that are like, I love playing a Jedi. Well, think yeah, about yeah, it though. Are OP. Let's think about this though. <laughs> Jedis, they are Mary Sue's. They're they are, they are Mary Sue's. I mean, I like this game because you're not necessarily a Mary Sue. I mean, you can have an epic backstory or craziness, but everybody's on equal footing, you know, it's like you... Frickin' which your sorcery are wielding, dude. Like, it's, we're all kind of like equal footing, you know. You can you can walk into a room. You pick up a Jedi lightsaber and you say, "Ah, lightsaber, a weapon, uh, a simple weapon for a more uncivilized time." And then Not you like today. Today. then you just stab into a ham and just like eat a ham off the plate. <laughs> like, yeah, a more civilized weapon. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of hand? Where would you get cakes in the Star Wars universe? Unless it's a, uh, it's a Grimori, 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 the, Grimori. Yeah, Grimorian. That's the Grimorian. I eat lots of Grimorians. They're delicious. Green eggs. Green eggs. Well, green ham, I guess. It's very Dr. Seussian. Uh, <laughs> where did you get green eggs and dewback eggs? Maybe. Oh, by the way, speaking of dewbacks. Oh, yeah, there's. there's uh, oh, uh, uh, Mark Hamill and Will Wheaton are uh, fighting dewbacks that are trying to eat their land speeder in here. That is, yeah. Uh, well, let me just show you real quick. Um, yeah, yes. Sure. Well, yeah, there we go. That's not Will Wheaton. I don't know what the hell it is. I honestly. I, obviously, it's supposed to be Uncle, you know, what's his face, but I can't remember. Don't don't shoot me for it, but there's Will Wheaton in there. Yeah. Will Wheaton. That is not Will, Wheaton. Will Walker. That is not Luke Skywalker's. That is Will Wheaton right there. That is Will Wheaton. That is Will Wheaton. 
Uh, which is awesome because Will Wheaton's awesome. Yeah, it's, nice, it's nice to see him on uh, on Tatooine. Yeah, see he's in this, you know, fighting dubex with the warning right The Sport Blaster. Or yeah, it's Sport Blaster. Sport Blaster. It's like, yeah. I'm gonna shoot me here and do my... <clears throat> Sounds like a head load, whatever reason now. For yeah. some reason he went from Star Trek to Star Wars. Yeah. So, anyways. Rebellion era Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. It does give a lot of history and information about the setting, but not overloading you. Uh, it gives you information saying, like, okay, this is what it would be like if you played for the Empire. This is what happens if you're playing against the Empire. You're playing with the Rebellion. you Against the Rebellion. Uh, with the Huts, with the Black Suns, against them, vice versa. Everywhere you go, you can even make minor factions that don't even exist. Oh, which, well, they, the have, they have all sorts yeah. of crazy stuff going on. They have planets that are on the fringe that are well known. There's moons that are well known. There's... The whole yeah. setting has been fleshed out to such a degree that the setting is on childhood. Yeah, it leaves yeah. well, it leaves nothing to the imagination. Uh, the setting, okay. The, now, the setting is on childhood. It's yeah. it's, for, it's the this, it's the good Star Wars movies. Yes, it's the setting yeah. itself is actually, in my opinion, the redeeming quality of it because reading the setting alone, I felt, oh well, this helps a lot. Yeah. Because you're playing in the Star Wars setting, they gave you a lot of information on the setting. There's also three I fabulous could, movies that yes. uh, also can give you a good. Crash course into like a bit of the setting and the feel and atmosphere. Yes, but everywhere else so far I've seen it's kind of a bit gray. I cannot make a fair call on the system itself because I haven't played this system yet. I've tried to read it, but the numbers versus the, the symbol system is confusing. Some of the numbers though they do use for like attributes, they use low numbers. Uh, they they have the standard attributes, they just name them differently. Like they have strength, but they call it brawn. Yeah. So like it's the same attribute system. Well, it's they, just re they just use synonyms for it's to avoid like, copyright issue. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see. Or it's just to stand out as being like different. Like oh, it's not strength. We have wrong. We're so different. We're so indie. I don't know. Uh, it's fantasy like fights are very uh, different. I also love the race. Uh, the race setup because droid. They are, they are droid. I love droids. They got Twi'lek. The they got Bothans. To, to, I really French see. Races. I really see dog people. Do they have Grimorian? They don't have Grimorian, I mean, they don't have Grimorian, but I bet there's like a splat book or something. There's about two other splat books that came out. I'm I wanna play I wanna play at pickles. I would like to play at pickles. Yes. Pickles? A pickles. I wanna be a pickle. <laughs> yes. Oh, I got the hooves. Okay. <laughs> um would you guys play this game right now, opinion? The <sighs> dice system's a bit terrifying to me. It is terrifying. You see you see my fear now. We are no. I, I was with you right from the get go. I feel like it's Space Odyssey. Like we're chimpanzees, like we're monkeys, and we have bones. And the black obelisk is rising. <laughs> we're just like, rrr, rrr. and the obelisk is really hot. So <laughs> covered with these dice. <laughs> the, I mean, the dice system has really killed it for me because that is really just. That's, Maybe it's more simple than we're taking it for, but it looks super complicated. There's it's a bunch of very intimidating. There's right? a bunch of colors and symbols. <laughs> I guarantee, you once if you started playing it, you'd, you'd get it down. But yeah. it scares the hell out of me still. Maybe because it's... we've played a lot of games, though. Like, what about someone who's never played an RPG before, like a tabletop game? You know what? No, it makes me more afraid of that. Not that there's an implication when you don't put a number on a die. You're not going for mechanical. You're going for dramatic, and it is a dramatic game. Well, no. it's a it's a space it's a it's a cowboy western space opera thing. It's not even about it's not really much odds anymore at that point. Nope. Because the because the dice it's like a, it's like a d six like each side has yeah fifty fifty chance almost. It, it's it is it's literally like it's highly it's the d sixes are one in three chance. It's a heroic yeah. game that you can. There's this game explains why stormtroopers can't shoot you. Because they don't understand the dice they're rolling for their blasters. Yep. But other than that, this game <laughs> is. Hilarious. Extremely different from what you can normally say. It's not like the Saga Edition, which we might do a throwback sometime of the entirety of the library for you so you can enjoy it, but it's definitely a dramatic system as opposed to a mechanical system, and it leans more to story rather than crunch. Yeah, and I, re I like the crunch because, you know, I like crunchy things. Yes, you like crunchy things. You are Mr. Chips. Okay, you are a Butterfingers and or Heath Bar. Jeremiah. Hell no, I'm a Reese's Cup guy, man. No, if you were if you were a candy bar. If I was a candy bar, yeah. it'd be a, a crackle. A crackle? I, uh, yeah, cra cra crackles are amazing. Yes. <laughs> and Jeremiah is a Milky Way. He's soft and gooey and good all around. Actually, no, I'd still go with Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Just turn it into a... No, they have candy bars. Boys. But anyways... I, and now even though the dice system aside, I have to like the game because it is, it's my childhood. I grew up with the Star Wars movies. I like the first, the good, 
you know, four, five, and six. You mean the ones that existed? The ones that existed, yeah. There was never a one, two, and three. No. No, it no. Is just is. There's not going to be a seven either. Maybe. I, we'll, we'll know if it exists or not after we see it and know if not whether or not it existed. Now, <laughs> if yeah, we says acknowledge Gung, it. Somebody says Gummy to me, I say, what kind of race is that from Star Trek? Yeah. What <laughs> psycho battle are you speaking to me right now? <laughs> is that what from, is a jar? Is that from jar? like Farscape? Or are those like jars within jars? I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't even add those to Farscape. Farscape was awesome. Why would I say that? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, Star Wars, it's the good era of Star Wars, like the story, so. I'm immediately in love with the story. Like, yeah. it's that kind of gothy space opera. Like, I usually like the gothy space opera. Gothy? Ah. Yeah, like, you think they're droids and stuff. They're not sleek and they're all... Nothing sleek. Everything's they're, dusty. They're kind of steampunkish. Not, not gothy. It's like Sergio Leone. Spaghetti Western style. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, a, it was a, yeah. it's a space Western. It is a space Western, yeah. But when I think they're robots, though, I think more gothic steampunk. Because they're not, they're not sleek. They're you, they're exposed wires. And they're, like the machinery, yeah. it's yeah. all. When you think easy. steampunk, what setting is it in? It's a western. Victorian, yeah. It's a Victorian western setting. Or gothic. Okay, well, gothic is too far back. Setting this setting aside, we I agree with John. It's a western in space, but one to five, one being you hate it, five being an amazing game. I will go first <laughs> as my fair assessment at this time that I can say with. With this current viewpoint that I have, I'll have to give it a three. It would be a four, but the set it system is a little bit scary, and the setting I know is good because I read the lore in this book, and it gives a lot of help for beginning information. I'm just going to give it down the middle of the runway. I can't call it good nor bad at this point. Uh, I also, like, for reviewers, remember, we, we just t take a quick look at so we can yeah. try to do an unbiased it's review. It's like, what does this look like to the average person just yeah. picking this book up? What, what yeah, does this approach? A non-RPG player, maybe. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 How, how does this present itself? It's called Let's Look At, yeah. for a reason. I do reviews so, on my own time. I might do a review of this book just to kind of throw it out there and Just because, see. like, what we're saying, you know, doesn't necessarily reflect what is... We're literally what is, reading this book by its cover. Yeah, yeah. like, and so, like, if you're out there like the game, don't, you know, get mad at me, but... I maybe I'm more about a Daryl's area. I'm giving it like a two point eighty five. So three. I'm gonna give this damn game a one because it's convoluted dice system. It does not cater to existing RPers. Overpriced. Uh, oh, you yeah. buy the dice separate. Matter of fact, you remind me of the price. I'd actually put it down to a two point thirty. <laughs> you remind me of the price. <laughs> two. Oh I god. Give this, I give this game a one. I'm sorry, but it's the only the, the reason it's a one. Unless is, you offer this free online, there's no redeeming. But the, the one is just like the story. Like it's just like it's it's the setting that it's I like, can get this elsewhere. It's been done. It's that's like the fifth element. That, so um, that is true. Like this setting, actually, this storyline. A more expansive setting has already been done, even though it's not canon. According to Lucas. So, thank you for guys for listening to our rants and our hatreds. Okay, we'll see you guys for Game Talk later. I'm Daryl. I'm Jeremiah. And he's angry. I'm very angry. I'm very angry at this damn dice. <laughs>